So uh, welcome to Brown Bag History. This is Heritage Week. And uh, we're, so we're gonna be talking about some of our heritage buildings in town. Uh, we'll start by acknowledging the land, traditions and culture of four nations, the Sequipmec, the Tanaha, the Sinaiqs and the Okanagan Nation Alliance. We acknowledge our use and inhabitation of this land sacred to these four nations. We respectfully honor their traditions and culture. So we'll start off by, um, of course, everybody knows about our courthouse. It's one of our most famous landmarks in town. But uh, what a lot of people don't know is that it wasn't the first courthouse. There, there was a, um, a public or a provincial government offices down on Front Street. And then in 1897, they constructed the first courthouse building. And it was on the same lot as the current courthouse is but uh, probably a little bit closer to uh, 3rd Street or yeah, to 3rd Street than the current building is. But you can see itself, um, even this early building, it was built of wood, but it was quite a, um, an imposing structure in itself. But uh, by 1911, it was decided that the community needed a, a new grander courthouse. And there was certainly a move around the, uh, the province to, uh, build newer provincial buildings. So the province was in a boom at the time and Revelstoke was part of that as one of the larger centers in the interior. So the uh, uh, construction of the courthouse began in uh, um, 19, 1912. They uh, did the, laid the cornerstone on uh, in May of, of 1912 in a big ceremony. And then they finally uh, finished construction by 1913. This is a picture during construction in the courtroom. In, uh, yeah, so 1913 was when it was formally opened. Um, at the end of the First World War, the Women's Canadian Club had a uh, memorial plaque placed on the front of the building with the names of the men from Revelstoke who died in World War I. And um, there was a ceremony there on September 19, 1919, when the Prince of Wales, Edward, uh, came to dedicate the plaque. So, um, the, the courthouse was, um, as I say, opened in October of 1913. It was uh, built by the two main contractors were uh, local men, uh, W.A. Foote and Anselmo Pratolini. Uh, both of them were uh, contractors on their own right, and then they formed a partnership and built the courthouse and several other commercial buildings in town, including what's now the, the Taco Club building and the one that was just uh, where the bookstore just moved out and uh, Manning's as well. They, uh, so they had a, you know, a business partnership for several, several years. Uh, the courthouse was definitely the most stunning of the buildings that, uh, that they built and uh, has some really beautiful features in it. It's uh, currently owned by the, the city of Revelstoke when the um, provincial government was uh, getting rid of some of their buildings several years ago, they were going to sell this one and the city, I think very wisely decided to purchase it because you know, it would be a shame to have a building like that, um, you know, not be in public hands. It uh, really is our, our landmark. Um, it was built with a copper dome, which over the years sort of turned kind of a and oxidized to a green color, and then it was painted green. It's currently a very, very pale green. Uh, it was a, a, a film that was placed over it a few years ago to uh, solve some of the uh, issues of leaking in the dome. The uh, city hall um, is uh, at the same location, but this is the original uh, city hall. So this is a corner of uh, Mackenzie and Second, and uh, this building was um, moved there in 1903. It was the original public school building that had been built in, in 19, 1891. And they moved it to that location and uh, renovated it to become the city hall. And uh, it served until 1938 when it was literally falling apart. It was, it was that the building was condemned. Uh, they were, a lot, several sections of it where nobody was allowed to go near it because it was just pretty much falling apart. Uh, so they made the decision to build a new city hall. Uh, the city 
was approached by a man named CBK Van Norman, who was a Vancouver architect. And uh, he gave them a proposal for building this building at a very good price and said he could do uh, deliver everything on the price that, that they agreed to and um, on, on the, the schedule that, that they agreed to. So um, they agreed to, to have this building built. A lot of the locals were referring it to, to it as the mausoleum or the portal of Connaught Tunnel and didn't really understand sort of the architectural uh, splendor of, uh, of the building. And I think a lot of people still don't under, see this as a, as a really beautiful building. But architecturally speaking, it's um, on an international list of buildings that were built in this um, modern international style. And um, CBK Van Norman was such a well-known Vancouver architect, and he was starting to experiment with this style. And uh, that's why he gave the city a good deal. You know, he wanted to, to build, the, build his buildings. He wanted to build this. And um, so it, it's really seen as one of the best examples of this style of architecture in a community of this size in particular. Um, some of the, the features of it are the very clean lines, the bank of small windows in the front, um, and then the, the curved windows on the side. And of course, um, I'll talk a little bit later about why it's got a big tower on it and why there's big doors in the back. But uh, this was our, our city hall and uh, it's just recently had a facelift, but it's undergone facelifts over the years. And this is a picture showing the interior. In uh, the 1940s, there was a note uh, in the newspaper saying that a lot of people, the, the Big Bend Highway had just opened in 1940 and lots of people were coming into the area. And a uh, note in the newspaper said, the most photographed feature in the community wasn't Mount Begbie or some of the waterfalls in the area, it was City Hall. And a lot of people were, wanting to go in and see the, the interior of the building. And people as far as away as the United States were really raving about this, uh, this new building, this new style of architecture that had been built in Revelstoke. So even if uh, the locals didn't always appreciate it, uh, a lot of other people did. This was the original interior and you can see every, it had a circular um, look throughout the, inside the building as well. In um, around the um, like 60s or 70s, uh, local artist and muralist Dave Williams was uh, given the job of uh, sprucing up City Hall. And he put some of his uh, train murals on it. And then he also did the, the city uh, logo on the front of the building. Um, I'm not sure when those were removed, but um, it was, um, quite a marked feature of the city hall for several years. The uh, first fire hall was on Front Street. Uh, Revelstoke actually had two fire brigades. Uh, the first fire brigade was formed in 1893 on Front Street and they had their own fire hall there. And then the, when the upper part of town started to develop more and there was more commercial buildings and more residences up in this part of town, uh, there were people who felt that the this part of the upper part of town wasn't being well served by the original uh, fire brigade, so they uh, made the decision to form a second fire brigade, and uh, fire brigade number two, and they had a station built behind the original city hall, fronting on Second Street, that was built in 1900. This is a picture of it here. In, uh, when they built the new city hall, they incorporated the fire hall into the city hall building. So the big tower there was built as the, the hose tower for uh, reeling the hose in there. And then you can see the wide doors for the, the fire engines on the side of the building. And uh, the fire, this is showing a, the side of the, the building with the giraffe lift in the, the 1950s. And you can also see on there a, a sign for the Revelstoke Library. The library moved around a lot, uh, and for a while it was located inside City Hall. 
the um, current fire hall was uh, built in 1982. And, um, you know, I was in town when it was built, but I had to double check the date because it didn't, it, it, we, I still refer to, you know, we still refer to it as the new, new fire hall, uh, but it was actually uh, 1982 that it was built. The, um, in 1885, there were actually two uh, police stations in town with two different police forces. And uh, that resulted in what was, became known as the, the uh, Farwell Police War, which is a talk unto itself. And it's also a chapter in my first Brandeis history book. But the Northwest Mounted Police was, uh, had the job of enforcing Dominion law in the railway belt particularly in relation to liquor, which is what caused the police war. But they had their barracks at the top of Douglas Street in 1885. The man at the front, front of the photograph in the white helmet was Colonel Sam Steele, who became uh, very well known in uh, this region. Fort Steele is named uh, for him. But uh, he, was, he was the commanding officer here in 1885. So the... Uh, Provincial um, police had a magistrate's office and a jail and a police office on Front Street as well at the same time. And they were, they were enforcing provincial law, which did allow liquor sales as long as it was done through a licensed uh, vendor or most usually a hotel owner. But, and that's what, that's what caused the war. But as I say, that's a story for another time. In uh, later years, in 1908, a, uh, post, a, a jail uh, and police office was built at Boyle and Third. And at that time, Revelstoke had its own city police force from the time that the city was incorporated in um, 1899 until the, sometime in the 1930s, uh, Revelstoke was policed by its local own local force. And then from the 1930s to the 50s, uh, there was a provincial police that were uh, providing local policing. And then uh, from the 1950s onward, it was the Northwest Mounted Police. But this was their uh, post office or police office in jail at uh, Boyle and Third, where the parks office is now. And, and this was in use until the 1950s. And at that time, uh, the courthouse uh, was used for police headquarters and jail until the next. Uh, police building was built. But when they were building the new post office in 1971, they had to uh, remove the old building. So they moved it. Um, and it was moved to Carlson Street between Leach and Simpson, uh, where it does uh, in still in use today as an apartment building. So I posted that on their Facebook page today. So if you were able to identify that one, good job. The uh, RCMP detachment on Wilson Street opened in 1967, and uh, that's currently home to the Revelstoke Visual Arts Center. The current RCMP detachment on Campbell Avenue opened in 2002. Revelstoke's first public hospital opened in 1902 at the site of Save on Foods. It was operated by the Revelstoke Hospital Society and named Queen Victoria Hospital because an agreement that the hospital society had with the Victorian Order of Nursing, who uh, agreed to provide the first matrons and nurses for the new hospital. The first matron was Elsie McKinnon, and uh, she later, uh, after working for a year, uh, she married Thomas Kilpatrick, who was the CPR superintendent, but also the head of the uh, Revelstoke Hospital Board. So um, he came in for some good natured ribbing at having stolen away the matron because of course, married women couldn't work outside of the home at that time. The, um, in 1910, a brick addition was added to the original frame structure and that was built by Foot and Pratolini. And you can see there the original frame building with the brick at the annex onto it, but it was still inadequate for the needs of the growing community. So a new brick hospital was built uh, between 1912 and 1913. And the new brick building was attached to the 1910 edition. It was a brand new annex. So there was no sense in removing that one. They just uh, added the new building onto the, the, the brick annex. 
The new hospital opened in 1915. It was built by uh, local builder O.W. Abrahamson at a cost of $85,000. Now, this photo uh, shows the hospital at the intersection of First Street and the former government road, which originally ran on a, an angle from Victoria Road next to where Lordico Auto Parts is now and angled through to Third Street, uh, the other side of the, the old high school building that's currently the old school eatery and the distillery. Uh, the, um, uh, that was, the government road was removed in uh, the 1970s and the um, the uh, cenotaph which was built in 1923 was built on a little triangle that was created by the angled road and it was moved over to its present location when they closed government road the new queen victoria hospital opened in december of uh, 1970 in uh, arrow heights and the old hospital was vacated by February 1971 and uh, removed in 1972. Some of the bricks uh, that were used in the back uh, gate pillars of our heritage garden came from the old Queen Victoria Hospital. Quite a few people in town managed to buy some of the bricks and there were still some uh, around in the community when we uh, built the garden in 2004. So this is what happened to the original Wood Hospital building that was built in 1902. When they built the, the Brick Hospital, uh, started construction in 1912, they moved the original frame building over to the next block where the current Royal Canadian Legion now stands. It was used by different uh, community organizations until 1919 when the Great War Veterans Association moved in. And you can see on the front uh, lawn, there's a cannon. Uh, they, there was a move to get uh, uh, German war relics in Canada to different communities. So Revelstoke actually had a German cannon sitting on the front of the Legion uh, building or uh, lawn for a while. Uh, the uh, Great uh, War Veterans Associate, Association later became known as the Royal Canadian Legion. And uh, the building continued to serve as the Legion. They did quite a few renovations to it over the years, including adding stucco. Uh, but it was destroyed by fire in April of 1962. And uh, then at that time, they um, rebuilt. And uh, the new uh, Royal Canadian Legion building, uh, built on the same site, was opened in January of 1963. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor at the time, G.R. Perks, uh, presided at the opening. Revelstoke's uh, first skating rink was uh, built on uh, 4th Street East at the location where the Coal River Manor Apartments is now. And uh, it was, um, you can see it's the building there that has the uh, Chum Tobacco sign on the, the, the roof of it. So it's just a, a big, uh, big building there, but that was the community rink. But it burned down in a big fire on January 1st, 1912. And it wasn't uh, rebuilt until 1924. They rebuilt a rink in the same location. Uh, this was uh, taken probably in the 1950s in one of the figure skating carnivals that was uh, held every year. And uh, in uh, June of uh, 1955, the rink was uh, damaged by a uh, windstorm. Um, you can see a house just next to the rink. Uh, that was the house where the English family was living in uh, 1955. And my husband, Ken, and his sister, Patty, were looking out the top window watching the roof being pulled off of the the uh, arena when their mother spotted them and pulled them away to, to safety so they weren't hit by any flying debris. But you can see it was quite badly damaged. It was repaired, but was later torn down in the, the 1960s. And uh, the, the current forum was opened uh, around 1967. The uh, YMCA was, the, uh, was built uh, in 1906. And you can see the sign there, it says RRYMCA, 
it was uh, Revelstoke Railway YMCA. So it was built mostly with funding from the Canadian Pacific Railway Company uh, to provide uh, both housing and recreational opportunities for the many young men who were working for the railway. It um, had a full gymnasium and uh, with the gymnastics equipment in it. There was even an indoor swimming pool, which wasn't very big. They actually called it a swimming tank, but there was an indoor pool. There were bowling alleys and uh, catering facilities was there. So a lot of community events and dinners were held there. In um, the 1940s, it was taken over by the local Kinsman Club and they ran it as the Civic, Civic Center until the current community center opened in 1979. And it was torn down in the summer of uh, 1979. This photograph and several of others of the demolition were provided by Candy Potter, whose father Lloyd Smith took these photographs. The um, Revelstoke Drill Hall was built in 1903 for the local unit of the Rocky Mountain Rangers. Quite a few communities had uh, local militias at the time, and now the Rocky Mountain Rangers are youth cadets, but at that time, the, the Rocky Mountain Rangers militia were adults who, who uh, were part of the local militia. And a lot of them ended up uh, signing up during the First World War for overseas service. And uh, this became the local recruiting center during World War I. It was uh, still in uh, active services, the drill hall in the 1970s and at least until the 1980s. Uh, it is uh, currently the house, the, the home of uh, Trans Canada Fitness on uh, Second Street West. The uh, agricultural hall was built at uh, Columbia Park in 1912. That was the site of all of the, the community's fall fairs and uh, there was a racing track there. So horse racing was one of the big events of the, the annual fall fairs. And the agricultural hall was built with the cupola so that that was the area for the judges and uh, viewing of the, the horse racing. That's why it was built the way it was with that tall cupola in it. You can see another building there, which uh, is no longer there. And the sign on the front of it says poultry. Uh, that was the, the, the showroom for uh, poultry displays. There were actually quite a few uh, people in town who raised poultry and were very proud of them and would uh, show them both in local and regional uh, shows. So uh, that was the poultry house there. But you can see the front, the sign on it says agricultural hall. Unfortunately, it was built in 1912 and was really only in use as the as the hall for uh, two years because in 1914, the World War I had just started and the local uh, turf club or the uh, group that were running the fall fairs and the horse races made the decision not to hold a fall fair that year and the fall fairs never resumed. So uh, the building was sitting there empty until the 1930s when the, uh, or sorry, 1924, when the Revelstoke Golf Club opened and uh, started their uh, golf club with uh, nine, the golf course with nine holes. And at that point, they transformed the old agricultural hall into their clubhouse. And it's still in use today as the, the clubhouse. Now we'll look at some of our old school buildings. Uh, Central School was built in 1902 on the uh, site where the old Mountain View, what people remember as Mountain View School was on the far end of the, the playing field. And uh, it was um, the really beautiful new brick school uh, as there had been an earlier uh, frame building that was built in 1891, but the um, population was growing quite rapidly and uh, so they needed a, a new school. So the Brick Central School was uh, was built in 1902 and it uh, served as an elementary school until 1959 
when uh, somebody broke into the building and started a fire in the basement of the school. And uh, they were, it caused enough damage that they were forced to demolish the school and it was no longer in operation. The Selkirk School was um, built in uh, 1911. By then, again, the population was expanding and they needed more uh, school space. There was a big debate about where to build the school, uh, but the, the city owned that uh, lot on 6th Street, so it, was, uh, it, it wasn't any additional cost to build it there. But a lot of people were wondering why, the, why they were building the school on the outskirts of town, because uh, in 1911, there still wasn't much up to 6th Street. There wasn't a lot of uh, ho homes around it. It was kind of on the outskirts of the town at the time. But as we know, the town quickly built up around it. Um, it was originally named Strathcona School, but the uh, local school board was under a lot of pressure to rename it as there was another Strathcona School in Vancouver and they wanted it to have a different name. So it was uh, uh, changed to Selkirk School. And uh, it was there, uh, it operated as a school until about 1980. And then uh, despite a lot of local uh, pressure to keep it, it was demolished in October of 1983. Um, there was a lot of people that were are, are still upset about the removal of that building. It was a beautiful building. Uh, the argument for tearing it down was that it, the roof was in really bad shape and couldn't, uh, couldn't support the, the building any longer and would need too many repairs, but it took them uh, a couple of days longer than they had anticipated to tear it down because the roof wouldn't come down. So uh, a lot of people saw that as a, a, a kind of a painful irony. Uh, and uh, another building, heritage building was lost and a lot of memories too. Uh, that is now the site of uh, Selkirk Gardens uh, condos. The uh, high school building was uh, built in 1904 by O.W. Abrahamson. I mentioned him earlier. He was the one who built the uh, hospital as well, who was a noted uh, local uh, contractor. He uh, was also mayor of Revelstoke at one time. And uh, so the, the, there had been an earlier just a two-room little frame building that had served as the high school since 1904. And then in 1914, they built this beautiful new brick building. And um, in the 1930s, they added on an annex. So you can just barely see um, on the, the, the side of this photograph, it was uh, built in the 1930s as the Industrial Arts Building. And uh, then in the 1950s, they built uh, more classrooms and a gymnasium. Uh, there you can see a photograph showing from the second street side showing the site of the, the gymnasium and some of the other uh, rooms that were built on. The uh, high school moved up to 9th Street in 1964 and the old high school became Mountain View Elementary and it served as uh, Mountain View Elementary until 2012 when it was closed and the new uh, Begbie View Elementary School uh, was opened. It's um, currently um, in um, a few years ago, they removed all of the additions and just left the original uh, 1914 high school building. And it's now home to uh, Jones Distillery and Old School Eatery and a few other commercial operations and offices as well. Now I'll talk about some of our churches. St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church was originally built at the corner of First and Mackenzie, where the Royal Bank is now, in 1893. It was moved to Fifth and Mackenzie in 1900, and uh, the wings were added at that time. When the current brick church was built on the corner of Fourth in 1964, the old church uh, was in use as the uh, church hall, and uh, then it was torn down in 1982 uh, to make room for the, the current hall. There's some pictures in the series showing it uh, coming down. Uh, 
at least one of the uh, the windows was donated to the to the museum. So we have one of the stained glass windows here. St. Peter's Anglican Church was originally built in 1896. And, um, and in the 1920s, they added on the church hall. And later still, they added the breezeway between the church and uh, the hall buildings. Um, it uh, was sold a few years ago to another organization, but uh, the building at least is still intact and uh, is the, the oldest uh, church building still in town. The Knox Presbyterian Church was built in uh, 1905 at the corner of Boyle and Second, just across from the, the museum. Uh, and um, it was built because there, there was an, another Presbyterian church, St. Andrews, but there was a split in the congregation. And um, it's uh, rather maddening because we have some of the church minutes but they, they don't actually say why the split happened. They say it was recorded elsewhere, but we don't have the elsewhere where it was recorded. So we don't know exactly what's, what caused the split, but the, um, the, the, the breakoff group was allowed to build a new church building. And they built this rather striking uh, Knox Presbyterian Church at uh, Sec Boyle and Second. And in the 1920s, when the, uh, Methodist and Presbyterian churches uh, joined uh, in Canada be to become the United Church of Canada. The local congregation started using the old Knox Presbyterian Church as their uh, as their main church building, and their other building, which was an older uh, church at the corner of uh, uh, Third and Mackenzie became sort of their hall and uh, area for Sunday school and uh, other, other church gatherings. But then uh, a fire occurred in, the, in this building and they went ahead and hurried up with their plans to build the new building, which was already, uh, they'd already planned on building the new church building. And I'll show you that one in just a minute. But first I'll show you what happened to Knox Presbyterian Church after it was sold. It became a rooming house and sort of a little hotel. Uh, you could rent rooms daily, weekly, or monthly there. And um, it was owned by a man named uh, Johnson. And then it was uh, acquired by um, Mrs. Lillian Edwards, who ran it as Harmony Lodge for many years. And uh, it's now operating as a hostel. And uh, Revelstoke United Church was uh, built in 1938. And as I mentioned, it had been the site of their, the Methodist Church uh, was uh, moved there from another location in the early 1900s. And uh, so they built their, their new church in 1938 and it was still operating as Revelstoke United Church. Although nobody is having on-site services at the moment. Hopefully that changes before too long. The uh, Pentecostal Church is where the Knights of Pythias Hall is now on the corner of Connaught and uh, Third. And uh, it was actually an old building that was built at the community of Taft, which is uh, east of, or west of town. It was an old, um, a logging town for a while and they had actually had a church there and uh, the church was the uh, building was uh, purchased and moved into Revelstoke and was rebuilt as the, the Pentecostal church in uh, 1941. The CPR station, the old the brick station was built in 1905 to replace an earlier uh, frame station in around the same location. Uh, you can see on the hill behind it is the CPR hotel that was built in 1897 and removed in the 1920s. Um, and th so this one is, um, you can see the, the sign on the side and that sort of style has been used now by the Revelstoke Tourism. Uh, I did a little bit of uh, research because a couple of people pointed out that the signs changed in different pictures. Sometimes it was black on white and sometimes it was white on black. And I discovered that uh, it started out as 
black or dark on white uh, for a period between about the 1920s and, for, and 1940s, they inversed it and then they went back. So uh, there were actually three different signs at, at some point, uh, but all the, the writing style was all very much the same. And all, I was, all but one or two pictures, they always had the little dot at the end of Revelstoke, the period. Um, so the, the station was well known by many people. Of course, the yards were really well maintained uh, and the, the flower beds were uh, just really beautifully kept for many, many years, especially when passenger service was running. Uh, the old station was demolished in 1978. And at the time that they took it down, they had already built the new uh, concrete building that you can see just at the end and uh, tore down the old one and immediately started, were using the, the new, new building that's still there now. Again, this photograph was taken by Lloyd Smith. So this photograph is taken uh, right where, we, where I am right now at uh, the site of the, what's now the museum building the, uh, and the, the post office building, um, probably taken around 1925. So it looks like they, they're starting to do some construction. The uh, site was uh, chosen in uh, 1910, but they didn't build the building until the 20s. But they, there was originally a house here that was uh, owned by uh, Mr. and Mrs. William Dickey and it was moved a few blocks over and is still standing now. Uh, but uh, they started construction on the new building in uh, the mid 1920s and completed it by uh, 1926. And that's the building that uh, we still know now. Uh, a few years ago on Facebook, I put a picture of the building and said, what was your box number? And there were at least 50 people who still remembered their box number from when they used to come to the post office here. And it hasn't been a post office since 1972, but people still remembered their old box number. So you know, post office in the community has a real central building. So it had carried, carries a lot of memories for people. It, um, on the front, it said post office, it still says that because we haven't, uh, covered up the signs and on the Boyle Avenue entrance, it said customs. Uh, a lot of people wonder why we had a customs office so far north of the American border, but that's because of uh, Revelstoke, the railway being such an important part of the east-west traffic. And then there was connection with the uh, branch line to Arrowhead and then the steamer traffic down to the Kootenays and into the Washington state through there. So it actually was a customs port for for quite a few years. And uh, this building um, remained as the post office until the current uh, post office and federal office, uh, Parks Canada office opened in 1972. Uh, the city of Revelstoke uh, back in the days when municipalities could buy federal buildings for a dollar, they did that. They purchased this building for a dollar for the express purpose of of it being the museum. And uh, there was some work done and shelving put up and the museum moved into here in uh, July of 1974. And um, for several years, the art gallery shared the building. They were on the upper floor. And um, in 1999, the museum was able to uh, take, o take over the whole building. And it's been the, the Revelstoke Museum and Archives um, ever since. And uh, we have a program room up here, other exhibits on the second floor, exhibits and gift shop on the first floor, uh, exit artifact storage in the basement. So we, we make good use of the, the whole building. And um, then we in the, used to have the delivery lane in next to the building. And we transformed that into our heritage garden in 2004. So um, hope you have a good Heritage Week. The uh, theme this year from um, Heritage BC is where do you find heritage? So there's heritage isn't just in our buildings. There's a lot of things in in our communities that uh, that are, are part of heritage. Um, we're all living through history right now, and we're actually going to be creating a plan to uh, try to 
um, collect material from our community relating to the pandemic. Because in another hundred years from now, you know, it, it's or even less, people are going to be wanting to look at, at how this uh, major historic event impacted the community. And when I look back 102 years ago to the 1918 flu pandemic, I can't find much other than the newspaper counts. So we want to make sure that generations going forward will have the material available to, to, um, to understand what happened in our community in 2000, in 2020 and 2021. So um, enjoy Heritage Week and thank you for coming. Um, I will let you know when I schedule another talk. Thank you very much.